What's up YouTube? My name is Lazy Tryhard and today I'm going to be doing a new tutorial in our LibGDX tutorial series. I want to first up apologize for my lack of videos. I've been at college trying to get my degree and it's kind of been hard to make videos because I'm away from my computer and it's fall break now so I'm going to try to shoot out as many good quality videos as I can in the time that I am here so that you guys can learn, go out and make your own uh, games or whatever you want to do with this and just run free. So I'm going to give you the tools and I'm going to do that as fast and as efficiently as possible. So today what I thought we would do is go over the enemy class. Add some life to this game or whatever you want to call it. Because right now it's pretty cool but I kind of, okay, so I removed the tree over here because it was pissing me off. So pretty bland game right now. We can walk around and stuff but we don't you know, have anything following us or any, any worries in the world. So what I thought we'd do is create an enemy class today. And I have it right here, but you guys can't see it because I already made it. And we're just going to, we're going to make another one because I just wanted to kind of get a good structure for it. But I, I like walking y'all through this. So what we're going to do is we're actually going to just completely demolish this. Goodbye. Save it. And we have a new enemy class. That's the first thing you'll want to do. Uh, y'all know how to do that. If you don't, just go watch my other videos again. You, that's kind of step one. So we're going to want to create this enemy class, kind of like we did the player class, with the exception of you can't you know, control it, obviously. And normally what I would do for these kind of classes is I'd create a really general class that has like a texture, uh, has a position, and stuff like that. So I don't have to write this code all over again. But... I'm not going to do that for this episode. I'll do that for another episode. It's kind of more of an intermediate uh, concept of inheritance and stuff like that. Uh, but for now, let's just get started with this class. So what we're going to want to do is we're going to want to create a vector. Actually, first off, I'm just going to delete this class because it's too boring. Um, and just I, I'll show you. Hopefully, y'all who don't know how to make a class went to watch my first or my other videos. But on the off chance you stayed it or stayed here, you're welcome. So we're gonna want to create a vector two, and that's gonna be our position. And we're gonna, gonna want to create a texture, and that's gonna be enemy texture. And we're gonna want to create a rectangle, which is gonna be the bounds. So y'all know the deal with that. Um, position deals with uh, where the person's at, texture deals with what we're rendering, and rectangle is going to help us figure out whether or not our player's been hit. So we're going to do public enemy, and we're just going to pass in a vector 2, and that's going to be the position, and the... Actually, you know what, that's all we're going to do, because this isn't going to be serializable, so we can actually uh, generate the texture in here. And I have a, a cute little Pac-Man guy for my texture. Uh, so you just go on, go out on the internet and find a cute little guy uh, that you can just find on the internet. And it's going to be called enemy.png because that's what I have over here. So we have the enemy texture rend rendered and the position for right now. Our, it's just going to be what we pass in, obviously. This dot position equals position, and finally, the bounds is going to be a new rectangle, and it's going to we're going to pass in the position dot x, position dot y, and we have to create the size. So for right now, it's going to be 50-50. Actually, you know what? Let's make it 25-25. And you can make that size as coolio as you freaking want. Um, but oh, I didn't put a comma right there. That's my bad. And you can make a, create a variable for size, but for right now, I don't really care. So public void updates, and this is what we're gonna want to do. This is where it gets kind of complicated because so we have to create a really simple AI that'll work for you know anything. So what we're gonna want to do is we're gonna want to pass in the player now, which don't be too alarmed. I'm not changing anything in the player, um, but we need to get the position of where the player is at so we can tell our cute little enemy where to go um, because it's going to want to follow the player. So this is what you're going to want to do. You're going to want to get the said make an if statement that says if player dot get position dot x uh, is 
greater than the position of the enemy, you're going to want to kind of readjust it so that the enemy uh, is going towards the player and that those X's are getting closer to one another. So you're going to want to add to the position and you can do that. And you're going to want to do the same if it's like the other way. So else, so that would be if the position is less than, you're going to want to subtract it. Um, minus minus. And that's just going to, again, move it like left and right. So we do that. And we're going to want to do that for the Y as well. So you're going to want to change that to a Y, that to a Y, that to a Y, and that to a Y. So that should work. So if the Y is greater, so that means uh, we're higher, then we're going to want to increment the position of our enemy up so that it goes up as well. And if it's lower, then you're going to want to go lower. So that's, again, really basic enemy artificial intelligence. I wouldn't even call it artificial intelligence. wouldn't even give that uh, its proper name or give it justice. But for right now, it does the job. And what you're going to also want to do is update the bounds so that it's uh, it updates with the position um, so that we can, like, if it hits the player, the, the rectangles hit, then we can record that and help it, uh, help it out. So... What you want to do is you're going to want to go to the game or the tutorial class and you're going to want to create an enemy iterator and just call it enemy and an enemy array list. So iterate it. Yeah. Dang it. Uh, enemy iterator and that's going to be awesome. And what you want to do here is obviously initialize the uh, array list and you're going to want to in create the enemy so, and you have to do it below the player so you have to do it down here you can't do it up here because we're going to pass in the player and the player hasn't been initialized until down here so we have to do it down here because the player if the player gets passed in and it's not initialized you're going to get a null pointer and it's just going to be ugly so we're just going to do this in one fell sweep enemies dot add and new enemy and it's going to take in a position so for right now we're just going to pass in like uh, let's do 50 50 and player so that's the position and the player so all we have to do now is iterate this ish and we should be good so enemy iterator equals enemies dot iterator and while uh, pff, not tree iterate enemy iterator iterator dot has next you're going to want to do the following we're going to create an enemy called cur and it's going to be enemy iterator dot next and with that cur you're going to want to update it and with that cur you're going to also want to draw it so batch dot draw oh gosh we don't want this really complicated uh, batch draw so we're going to do batch dot draw the really simple one, uh, that one, and it's going to ask for a texture region. We're just going to give it a texture. Get texture, or we're going to. I haven't get done the edit or the getters and setters. So I'm just going to do that really quick. We just forgot to add the getters and setters so that uh, we can access it outside this class. So do that, that, and that. Don't do the player because that just makes it complicated. Um, so you want to do the x enemy dot get I'm sorry cur dot get position dot x cur dot get position dot y and uh, you're gonna want to do fifty fifty or twenty five twenty five because that's the size we want the sizes to be consistent. And one more thing you have to do is you have to move this enemy and enemies uh, iterator. It's currently inside the else. Just move it outside. I just kind of miss it really quickly. Uh, where we do the loading. I put this uh, in the else statement where we would have to, if we created the new player, then we would also create a new enemy. So, screw me. Uh, I suck. Troll in the comment section below, but that's how you do it. You have to move it outside the semicolon. 
or outside these uh, brackets because I mean duh obviously idiot um, but now you see we have this cute little guy who's like following us wherever we go we can't outrun him because the same speed but nothing really happens once he gets there he kinda just gets there so one we're gonna wanna change get that out of here um, we're gonna want to change this so we have a little faster speed than our cute little furry en enemy right now. So now that if we do that, we can like run super fast and outrun our counterpart. So we also want to make like see what happens when we actually run into it. So like you can do whatever you can create like a health thing or a health system. Uh, for this purpose, I'm really just gonna like show you guys what like how to record if it hits it or not. So um, for now, we can just do if player dot get bounds dot overlaps uh, cur dot get bounds. I'm just gonna say like system dot out dot print ln. Uh, just be like player hit, and then you can like do like a health system or like let's see so nothing happens you see down here one 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 that's just like don't worry about that look player hit player hit uh... and then we run outside it's just one 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 and then player hit player hit uh... you can t again you can do every the frick you want uh... but that's just a basic enemy thing uh... we can also just to show that we can also create new enemies uh... i can do this just enemy oh, not caps enemies dot add new enemy and I'm just gonna change the vector to to like a 100 100 uh, player and that's not gonna work I'm gonna put that right there and uh, new vector 2 and you just wanna do that and we should be all good um, one more colon or one more parentheses out there, and again, this is gonna, gonna I'm gonna cringe when I do this because like the AI is gonna look so like stupid because once they get in a line, they're gonna be like directly parallel with one another, and they're gonna like it's it just looks kind of like blocky and whatnot. Uh, but for our purposes, it, it gets the job done. If you have like a platformer, this is perfect for that because like. For a three, for like a two-dimensional thing or whatever you want to call this, uh, like those two enemies are like literally right next to each other, and you can't obviously have that. Um, but for like a platformer or many, many cases, this is going to be like perfect AI because it's simple, it's very easy to run through, it's it's not a lot of performance issues. So thank you so much for watching. I apologize for that little brain fart I had. But if you have any ideas for the next coming videos, if you want anything, just hit me up in the next couple of days because I will be in town and I will love to do some videos. So, again, thank you so much for watching. If you liked it or it at least helped you in the slightest, hit that like button uh, and give me some comments, give me some feedback on what you want to see in the future. So, thank you for watching. Please rate, subscribe, comment, and I will see you guys later.